This floating factory, heavier than any warship, is designed to withstand cyclones while performing one of the most difficult jobs on Earth, pulling natural gas from a reservoir nearly a kilometer below the waves. This is the heart of the 17.7 billion Australian dollar Scarborough LNG project, a mega build of staggering ambition. Its goal is to connect this deep sea titan to the Australian mainland with a 430 kilometer steel artery and feed a new onshore mega factory that will supercool the gas to minus 162 degrees Celsius. But how do you build such a colossal machine in the middle of nowhere? And what happens when this modern marvel comes face to face with ancient history and a planet demanding change? The Scarborough gas field was first identified way back in 1979, a time when the technology to reach it simply didn't exist. For decades, it was a sleeping giant, an immense treasure chest of energy locked away in the deep ocean. Inside this reservoir lies a colossal 314 billion cubic meters of natural gas. To give you a sense of that scale, it's enough energy to power over 8.5 million homes for more than 30 years. But for 40 years, it remained untouchable. The field sits in water that is, in places, up to 1,500 meters deep, making it one of the most remote gas resources ever targeted off the Australian coast. It was too far, too deep, and too expensive to develop. So, after 40 years of waiting, what incredible technology finally made it possible to awaken this giant? And what kind of machine would you need to build to pull gas from a kilometer below the ocean's surface? The answer is one of the largest and most complex machines ever sent to sea, the Scarborough Floating Production Unit, or FPU. This isn't a ship that can sail away. It is a permanent, semi-submersible industrial island, the heart of the entire offshore operation. The scale is almost impossible to grasp. The FPU is one of the largest of its kind ever built. The top sides, which is the factory part sitting on top, weighs around 30,000 tons. The hull it sits on, the part that keeps it afloat, weighs another 37,000 tons. To put that in perspective, the top sides alone weigh as much as three Eiffel Towers. Even the living quarters, just one small component where the crew will live, is a 3,250 ton module on its own. This floating giant has one critical mission, to take the raw, unprocessed gas from deep within the earth, clean it up, and prepare it for its long journey to the coast. Its main jobs are to remove any water from the gas in a process called dehydration, and then use massive compressors to pressurize it, pushing it into the pipeline. But how do you keep a 67,000 ton factory perfectly still in the violent waters of the Indian Ocean? It is moored to the seabed, 950 meters below, using enormous suction anchors. These are like giant upside down steel buckets, some of the largest in the world. They are lowered to the seafloor and then a remote operated vehicle pumps the water out, creating a powerful vacuum that drives them deep into the mud, pinning the colossal FPU in place against the forces of wind and waves. From this stable platform, the real work begins. The FPU is the collection point for an initial eight subsea wells with a total of 13 planned over the project's life. These wells are drilled a further 900 to 1,000 meters below the seabed, deep into the gas reservoir. It's the equivalent of drilling a skyscraper-sized hole into the earth, but starting from a platform floating nearly a kilometer above the ocean floor. The entire operation is a masterclass in creating stability in one of the most chaotic environments on the planet. But once the gas is processed, how do you get it to shore? The gas begins the next stage of its journey through an incredible piece of infrastructure, a 430 kilometer long subsea pipeline. This is a high-tech steel artery, an umbilical cord connecting the deep sea operation to civilization. It's long enough to stretch from London to Paris. To ensure the maximum amount of gas could flow efficiently, engineers made a critical decision during the design phase to increase its diameter from 81 centimeters to 91 centimeters. While that might not sound like much, on a project of this scale, that small change represents a massive engineering effort to optimize the entire system. Installing this pipeline is one of the project's greatest challenges. At depths of 950 meters, the external water pressure is immense, exerting a crushing force on every square centimeter of the pipe. The pipeline's walls have to be incredibly thick 
and made of high-strength carbon steel, just to resist being flattened into a ribbon before a single molecule of gas flows through it. Before the first section could be laid, the entire 430-kilometer route had to be meticulously surveyed and prepared. This involved specialized vessels mapping the ocean floor, and in some areas, dredging a trench and laying rock foundations to create a stable bed for the pipeline to rest on. The installation itself is a slow and steady race against the elements. A specialized pipe-laying vessel moves along the route at a painstaking pace of around three kilometers per day, welding sections of pipe together and lowering the continuous steel tube to the seabed. This process is made even more complex because the ocean floor is not an empty wasteland. The pipeline's route had to be carefully navigated through a hidden minefield of existing subsea infrastructure, including other energy pipelines and critical fiber optic cables that carry the world's internet traffic. A single mistake could be catastrophic. This invisible complexity highlights the immense risk involved in every meter of this underwater highway. After its 430 kilometer journey, the gas finally arrives at the coast, ready for its final and most amazing transformation. When the gas from the Scarborough field reaches the shore, it enters the Pluto LNG facility, specifically a brand new section called Pluto Train 2. This is the final crucial stage of the journey, a marvel of chemical engineering where the gas is transformed into a supercooled liquid so it can be shipped across the globe. Pluto Train 2 is a testament to modern construction methods. Instead of being built piece by piece on site, which would take years, it was constructed as 51 giant modules in a specialized yard in Indonesia. These modules, weighing a combined 56,000 tons, were then shipped to Australia and assembled like the world's biggest and most complex Lego set. This modular approach saves an enormous amount of time and allows for higher quality control. Once operational, this new powerhouse will produce 5 million tons of liquefied natural gas, or LNG, every year. When combined with additional capacity from the original Pluto train one, the Scarborough project will export a total of 8 million tons of LNG annually. The science at the heart of Pluto Train 2 is the process of liquefaction. Here, the natural gas is cooled down to an incredible minus 162 degrees Celsius. At this extreme temperature, the gas transforms into a liquid, and in doing so, it shrinks in volume 600 times. This is like taking a giant beach ball and shrinking it down to the size of a small grapefruit, making it possible to load onto massive tanker ships and transport it efficiently to markets in Asia. To achieve this, the project uses a highly advanced and efficient technology called the Optimized Cascade Process. This system is designed to be one of the lowest emission liquefaction technologies in the world, which is a key part of the project's story. It achieves this in several ways. First, instead of traditional industrial turbines, it uses six high-efficiency aeroderivative gas turbines to power its massive compressors. These are essentially modified jet engines, similar to those found on a Boeing 747, and they are far more efficient at converting fuel into power. Second, it recycles its own energy. The plant is fitted with waste heat recovery units, which capture the hot exhaust from the turbines and use that heat to power other parts of the facility, meaning less energy is wasted. Finally, the process includes specialized units that strip out impurities like nitrogen, ensuring the final LNG product is incredibly pure and energy dense. This combination of a naturally clean gas source, the Scarborough field contains less than 0.1% carbon dioxide, and this hyper-efficient technology is why the project is marketed as one of the lowest carbon intensity LNG sources in the world. But this claim sits at the very center of a massive global controversy. The Scarborough project is a colossal $17.7 billion gamble, an investment on a scale rarely seen in Australia. It is projected to be a massive economic engine, creating over 3,000 jobs during its construction phase and pouring an estimated 52.8 billion Australian dollars in taxes and royalties into the Australian economy over its decades-long life. However, this economic promise is shadowed by fierce opposition. Critics have labelled the project a climate bomb, calculating that over its lifetime, it will be responsible for releasing over 1.6 billion tonnes of carbon pollution into the atmosphere, the equivalent of adding 15 new coal-fired power stations to the world's energy grid. Beyond the climate impact, 
deep concerns have been raised about the project's direct effect on the marine environment. The construction involves blasting and dredging the seabed directly in the migration paths of whales and in a region known as the richest area of marine biodiversity in Western Australia. There is also alarm over the potential damage to the nearby Murujuga rock art, a priceless 50,000-year-old cultural landscape that holds some of the oldest human engravings on Earth. Despite numerous legal challenges attempting to halt its progress, the project has pushed forward relentlessly. Today, it is over 86% complete and is in a race against the clock to deliver its first shipment of LNG in the second half of 2026. The Scarborough project is a titan of engineering, a testament to human ambition on a scale that is hard to comprehend. But it also stands at the center of a global debate about our energy future. What do you think? Is this a necessary step to power our world or a dangerous gamble with our planet's future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you were amazed by this mega build, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications so you never miss our next incredible journey into the world's most ambitious projects.